guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on our test server. Before we get into a couple summons, we're going to be looking at the Abyssal Expedition. So unfortunately, um, it, it seems like there are a couple issues, which we're going to take a quick look at today. So the Abyssal Expedition, very cool expectation, very cool boss. Um, when you get in here, there are a lot of different features within here. You can see we're finally up to the boss. But if you look, guys, in an Abyssal Expedition of 70 players, you can see we have a couple here. Um, this is actually the part that you come out of the underground layer, meaning from here, you kind of have to span out into all of this middle content, guys. Once you do come out of the end, you can see there's kind of a wall around this. So you do have to go through the underground layer, which in itself is proving to be an incredibly difficult task. So we're gonna look through the map, guys. We actually started over on this right side. You can see how they're kind of all connected. Players on both sides have completely filled it up. But you can see we go through this right side through the door, then through another door. So we actually have both boss fights on both sides that we did go through right here. Um, continuing onwards to the next gate before we hit the underground realm. Now this is the original expedition. This is normally what we see when it comes to the Vault of Time, when it comes to the Abyssal Expedition. I'm um, going through and making a lot of movement, a lot of progression, but now comes the issues that we find within here because looking at the players, guys, it has taken an, an incredible amount of stamina to get through the Abyssal Expedition. Looking at some of the original maps, that would be it. We would be onto the boss right now. We'd actually go through another gate, usually on the top or bottom of these. And then we'd actually be right at the boss, which unfortunately is not the case because as you can see here, guys, we are on the surface and boom, that is right. You are in the underground. Look at the size of the underground. Now, again, this is where it is getting incredibly difficult, guys, is because not only do you have to have all of your stamina to go through the the surface area, but now you have to have a ton of stamina to go through the underground layer which again has been proving to be incredibly difficult and the other thing you'll kind of notice in here is before you get to the boss with the underground layer you have these beacons so you actually have the magma mines these you have to light up and illuminate you can see in this area right here where it is lit up you can see also in this area where it's dark so this beacon is not illuminated because we have not connected to it so not only do you need an incredible amount of stamina to go through here is going through you kind of have to path almost beacon to beacon if you want the opportunity for instance you can see we path to this beacon we moved over we pathed right here to this beacon this beacon allowed us to illuminate this little area around it which gave us an opportunity to take these towns villages um t6s t7s things of that nature without these you can see up here guys without the illumination of this beacon within the magma mines um, we even have like a city one right here. You get this wicked debuff, guys. Now, this is a really, really bad debuff, which is the reason why in the underground, we have players that are pathing to illuminate these beacons. Once the beacons are illuminated, everybody else can come in and they can take the the cities, the, the, the tier six, the tier seven, tier eights within here. Again, it is incredibly difficult if the beacon is not illuminated or if you don't have the stamina to actually path through this area because look at what it gives you guys. This is the dim debuff, reduces the allied hero's accuracy by 600 points and increases the enemy hero's magical suppression by 400 points in a battle. Effects removed when the tile has been lit up. That is right guys, when you illuminate the, the place right here, um, you can see an illuminated town right here. It actually just X's out that buff. The tile has been lit by the magma mine. Dim effects are removed. That is right, guys. The dim effects on that one are removed. But if you look down here, magical suppression. When a unit receives magic damage, they have a chance to reduce the magic damage taken by 50%. So as a result, any players that came in here as a sorcery or went the mage spec, um, are really getting done wrong in here. It's incredibly difficult, again, if they went with that mage spec. Um, as difficult as it was going sorcery the first time, now they made it even more difficult because coming through here, this has no effect on 
I, I mean, short of the accuracy debuff, but this doesn't really seem to have much effect on the overall damage, where this one for the Mage Tree, it does. Chances based on the difference between the attacker's magical efficiency and the target's suppression, the higher the gap, the lower the chance. That's right. So for a lot of players, guys, this tree, they kind of put a pretty big nerf in there, which again, a, a lot of players are really up in arms about. But also remember, guys, this is the beta version. That is right, guys. This is kind of the test version in here. Um, they're going to have to make some adjustments to this because, again, it, it seems incredibly difficult to get through here. If you went like I did right here with my celerity, um, easy to get through here, to, to move through here. It wasn't super difficult. But if you did go to the sorcery tree, because of the dim buffs that they do allow within the Vault of Time, again, incredibly difficult. The other one is when we finally got to the boss. So once we did get to the very, very end boss, um, again, it's been incredibly difficult because at this point, as you can see, he's at, what, 84%. Um, about 85%, um, nobody has any stamina left. So literally he is sitting in here. We are just banking stamina, um, waiting to see what we can do. We're building up our blessed relics. I don't know how strong we're gonna have to build these. So I actually dropped two tiles here, two of my pathing tiles. Um, I'm gonna take some more probably tier sixes, tier sevens out here. You can see a couple more players pathing to a couple of these bigger tiers which of course they do have the, the debuffs in there and everything. But again, we're getting to this point and nobody has stamina. And in addition to that is when you look here, guys, this requires three teams, which we've always seen before when you get to the boss. However, there was usually a really strong path going all the way through here. You could pick up a couple of resources on the way, some seven, some eights on the way, getting in here. And the same was the true when it came to the top, you'd have players kind of pathing through here. They'd pick up some six, some seven, some eights, and then we'd both converge on the boss. Because this little gate, this little layer rift is right in the smack dad in front of the boss, um, you have to burn all of your stamina again on three different teams to get through here and actually path around to all of this area, guys. There's an incredible amount of resources in here, but again, it's not about so much about the resources because if you look, usually, usually the land was always kind of stacked. You can see, guys, nobody's even going for any of this stuff kind of on the outer edges. Um, again, a majority of these before were always packed, were always taken. Now you don't have the stamina. Players are completely getting burnt out on the stamina that we have within the Abyssal or the Vault of Time. So I'm hoping guys they make an adjustment if they make maybe the stamina or when you get to the underground doesn't really cost as much stamina, but it just seems at this point, it's it's kind of hard to get through here. Cause even attacking here guys, you have to use two teams and you do get the dim buff. I know it's not the dim two, it's the dim one. But again, when you're moving kind of beacon to beacon to beacon to come through here and the amount of resources, a lot of them are not taken, just like you see right here, guys. There's not even enough people to take all of these lands, all, all of this, these. How I mean, look at the tier fives, look at the sixes, the sevens, the eight. They literally just sit here. There's an overabundance now of land, and we're very, very minimal when it comes to the stamina. So, guys, that'll do it for today's video. Um, I want to do a little bit of summons here because I know we are over on the test server. So we have a couple chests right here. I finally bought my very last piece of Merlin, guys. I'm so far behind on the test server, but we are absolutely getting there. We have nine stones, which look at that. Hey, loss, a another copy of. We got a copy of Sonya in there. Haven't seen the unlock. We got Kazard. We've been looking for Kazard, guys. We're trying to build him up to that mythic to get the signature item. So look at that pull. We got a Celestial. We got a Hypogen. We got Grez. We got Sonya. Very, very lucky with that pull right there. Again, looking in the Stargazer, we are looking for Kazard. Temple of Time, I'm gonna try to pull Brutus. I wanna see if we can get a couple copies of him just to continue building him. Number two, just some resources in there. We got a Greyborn card though. Number three, and I've had some pretty good luck with Brutus, that's why I was hoping to at least unlock him. I think, there we go guys, that should be our copy of Brutus. There it is guys. The absolute, the, the mountain strength, the massive, massive Brutus. 
very cool to see. Um, again, Kazard we've been looking for in here. I've also been looking to build out Mishka. I need two copies of Mishka in here. So I'm hoping that we can do a couple summons here um, and pull hopefully one or two copies. I'm still looking for Kayleen, a, a couple different heroes in here, but I know Mishka we absolutely want to build. So I'm going to swap this over to, I'm going to swap it to the Wilders. There we go. That should swap it to the Wilders. We'll do our summons there. We'll do the scrolls again. We need two copies of Mishka. Um, and we're going to do some furniture summons in here. Again, test server guys, I, I need to build out and I need to focus on a couple more heroes in here. We did build out all of the rooms within the furniture itself. There we go. There's a second copy of Sonya. Art on the table, which again, we have six copies there. And test server guys, completely free to play. Um, we don't put anything into this. We don't put anything into the test server. But there is our copy of Leica. Takes her very nice to five stars. And I think we have another one there for Grez. And I think I've seen Flora in there. I believe Flora with the chest that we do get out of here. There is our Ascend. That's actually our first Ascended Celestial Hero. That, that is the, the one and only guys as of right now. Come on, Mishka. We just need a copy. There is a copy of Reku. I just thought of the wish list. We have Mish yeah, we do have Mishka in here. I was gonna say, I thought we had Mishka in here. Um, we have Raku, we have Iran, we have Kaz. You know what? I'm gonna put looking pretty good. I'm gonna put respite or let me put Lorzin in here. I'll put Lorzin. We know the Thorn Cheese works incredibly well, especially with Lorzin being built. There's another one which is a star. Don't need more copies of a star. We need two more copies of Mishka. And I'm hoping I have enough to go ahead and get those two copies. Guys, there's one. That is what we needed. If we can pull another one from here, that'll give us diamonds so we can use on the Stargazer. And it is a copy of Respin. All right, so we need one. We need one copy here. There it is, guys. Our very first one. So that takes her up to Ascended. Very nice. Greyborn, again, we're looking for Kaylee, which we got a copy of Baden there. And there we go, Mishka is done. We've been stuck um, with building levels on here. Uh, the Resonating Crystal's actually been stuck for quite a bit. So now we have to gain another 10 levels. Looking at our Essence, we have 662,000 Essence. So it should be relatively easy just to um, stock some levels in here. So I'm going to get them all set, get them all leveled up. Very, very cool to see, guys. That does give us Stargazer cards. We already got one copy of Kazard. I am hoping that we can pull another. It would be very, very cool to see. Love to see some diamonds. Got a Graveborn card right there. And no copies of him. I'm going to save the rest of the diamonds. Might as well, right? And then we have Furniture. Furniture is the other um, interesting one, the Oaken Inn. I didn't even realize it, guys. If you look here, we have 124,000 Poke Coins, um, which is just absolute insanity that we have that many Poke Coins. We'll drop Flora in here, too. We'll get her a little bit of furniture. Each guy I want to just open because I'll probably forget to open the furniture. And then Flora will drop in here as well. And start unlocking her furniture, which that's all that we have. But we did put our Celestial in there. Collect all Celestial, which we have not done yet. But we'll put both of them up there for the priority. And I think I might have some furniture for Mishka. I have two pieces already. Very nice. Let me check my bag, see what I got in here. Um, we have Merlin. We have Ulna. We have the twins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We are all over the place, guys. Absolutely all over the place. Let's link Merlin up to somebody. Let's go with who do we normally not use? We go with Flora. I, I don't see Merlin and Flora being in the same formation. That'll give us an opportunity, though, to drop him into the Oaken Inn as well. Because, again, we have his furniture and we know we do. I'm going to unlock a little bit in here, too. We can go ahead and equip him up. Definitely going to be able to make some more, uh, some more progression on here. 
And Merlin would have been awesome to have within the Abyssal Expedition. But absolutely, guys. So there's Merlin. Four of nine already. All right, so we have Merlin in there. Now we have Baba Yaga in there. You know what? I'm going to drop her out. I'm going to throw Merlin in there. Merlin's nine of nine. Really, really good, guys. And then, of course, Mishka's already in there. Let's see what we can do. I, I feel like we can do a lot of damage with 124,000 poke points. I didn't even realize we had that many. So there's a copy for Scarlet. Copy for Rowan. I feel like we're going to max a lot of these heroes out, guys. I feel like we're so close. Baba Yaga, there's her first piece. I want to see some for Mishka. I want to see some for Merlin. There is Frampton. Frampton's another one, guys. We've been working on building him here. Um, we chose to go with the Charmizard. There is another copy for Cecilia. Cecilia is another light bear. Does incredibly well. There is another copy for Frampton. I don't even know how many we have built for Frampton in there. But I believe Cecilia is just about done. Needs one more. I'm going to use one of these cards on Cecilia so we can get her to the 9 of 9. No, I'm going to save them for Scarlet. I didn't realize that Scarlet didn't have that much furniture. Bugging out a little bit here, which there's another piece for Rowan. I think Rowan's pretty close. Rowan doesn't need his 9 of 9 either, but he's my favorite hero, so he'll get a little bit of, a, a little bit of love. There's a third piece for Frampton, another piece right there for Scarlet. Piece for Mishka. Mishka needs that 9 of 9 furniture, guys. Just like Alna, just like a lot of other heroes in here, um, absolutely needs to be built. There's another piece that gives us Two of nine for Baba Yaga. Thinking we're going to max some of them out. King Arthur. Still love using Arthur. It, is, it seems like he's kind of dropping out of formations. But I still do like him. There is another piece. Gives us the nine of nine there for Celia. Gives us three of nine for Rowan. Three of nine for King Arthur. Three of nine there for Mishka. I knew we were going to get a ton of furniture in here, guys, which is phenomenal. Drop her out. Let's see. So we still got... No, I think Alna is pretty close. Let me see how many I have for Alna. I want to kind of tr pay attention and try to do... We got Alna. We have one. A lot for the twins. One, two, three... We have three for Frampton. So Frampton's got his three of nine, but Alna only has one. I'm going to drop Alna in there. Guys, Alna's a hero with the nine of nine furniture um, is where she comes effective. Without that nine of nine, not super effective. Um, it is her nine of nine furniture ability that really, really makes Alna shine. Without it, not, again, not effective whatsoever. Another piece for Arthur. Another piece for Baba Yaga. That gives her the three of nine. She's a hero that I do use in formations, guys. I still use her on the campaign. Another copy for Mishka. I think we're going to have to. We have five cards on the table. We're close to building out another one. That is the three of nine for Baba Yaga. Go ahead and recycle these and see what we got. I know we're going to have a lot to recycle here. It is not a mythic pull. But we are close to having one more piece. Let's see what we got for Scarlet. Again, she's a hero, guys. It is well worth the priority getting her to 9 of 9. She's probably one of the very first... Heroes that I'd recommend just because of the utility within the Twisted Realm, within the Cursed Realm, um, Guild Bosses. Absolutely a, a big, big priority getting that 9 to 9 furniture in there. I know we have a lot of heroes that are pretty well built. Still do need a couple, but even looking at Graveborn, see most of the Graveborn are built. Only have Flora in there. 
Um, we have Frampton in there. Kazar doesn't need it. Mahira doesn't need it. Um, we still have Albedo. You know what? I'm going to put Albedo instead of Arthur in there. Of course, the, the rest of them we definitely have to focus on. And then the core heroes within here. I know we don't have Nomura built, but a majority of the core heroes in here pretty well built. We have Skarath built to the three of nine. Scarlet is built out. Awakened Thane we got to build. I'm going to go ahead and put Rosaline in there. We're going to save our last card. I don't think we have anyone at the 8 of 9 as of right now. So no 3, 4, 4, 4, 5, 3, and 3. That's it, guys. They are fully optimized with the furniture in there. Again, a lot of heroes we're going to have to build out. I'm not sure exactly what we have for Merlin. But I think I have enough essence and emblems to go ahead and build them out. There we go. There's the plus 10 signature item. He's another one, guys. The, the furniture on him, really, really important. 197, I don't think that's enough to take him all the way to the plus 30. Nope, we are short at the plus 29. But that's okay, guys, because he's got four of nine furniture. That is going to help a lot. That is honestly going to help a lot. Um, Ezio, I think I have to garrison again. That's why he's kind of grayed out. Um, this account was didn't pick up all of the all of our dimensional heroes, but very cool, guys. We got a couple copies. We got our copy of Brutus that I was looking to pick up. There he is, guys, the legendary, just like we did with Thane. Um, definitely gonna build him out a little bit more. Taylene, the original one we built, we got a couple copies right there. Same with Aziz, a couple copies, so we can use them in different aspects within AFK Arena. So again, guys, that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.